Hello guys! So for your iGame C or your introduction to game concepts, our module 4 is regarding action game genre. So let's start. First, objectives. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to learn what are, are what learn what an action game genre is, learn what are the subgenres of the action game genre, learn the game features of games under the action game genre, and lastly, learn the core mechanic features of the action game genre. So, first, what are action games? So, action games require good and uh, good hand and eye coordination, and usually require quick reaction as well. So, the fastest action games are sometimes called twitch games, in, uh, implying that the action takes place but almost a reflex level. So, a good example of um or of a twitch game will be fighting games like um Tekken, okay, wherein the game happens in real time fast faced real time okay so there there's almost no time to strategize or to think about the next move so most of the time uh, it just involves the skills that you have as a player and your experience in order for you to properly play and win the game in such games the player doesn't have time for strategy or planning so while the stress level is higher uh, than in lower paced games the nature of the challenges themselves must be simpler okay so, not all action games depend on raw speed. However, some require other physical skills such as accurate aim, rhythm or timing, or the ability to execute combo moves. So, complicated sequence, or basically a combo move, is a complicated sequence of commands or moves that you can perform in a game. So, you can usually see this type of combo moves in fighting games like uh, Tekken. So, action games are one in which the majority of the challenges presented are tests of the player's physical. So take, take a note of that. Most of the time, okay, challenges presents, presented are tests of the player's physical skill and coordination. Okay, So most of the time, action games will require the player to have the physical skill okay, uh, in order for him to win the game. So puzzle solving, tactical conflict, and exploration challenges are also often okay present but most of the time yeah, more on fighting is involved in action games so the simple core mechanics and gameplay of action games mean that those games without too much audiovisual contents are also well suited to less powerful machines so such as handheld devices mobile phones or the web browser so uh, at this day so basically we can play almost all types of game using your mobile phones but still you can still play your action games using your personal computer of course and your um, consoles like your ps5 or whatever console you have so the most familiar and popular action games are platform games or we also call them platformers but the genre also comp uh, encompasses fighting games fast puzzle games, and a broad miscellany of others. So, shooter games were considered as a kind of action games for a long time, but now they are so distinct that they have their own genre. Okay? So, let's proceed with the subgenre. So, the first uh, subgenre that we have will be your platform games or your platformers, wherein an avatar moves through a vertically exaggerated environment, jumping on and off platforms at different heights while avoiding obstacles and battling enemies. So, the avatar has a supernatural jumping ability and usually can't be harmed by falling or by falling long distances. So, when we say avatar, we usually refer to the playable character that you are using to the game okay so most of the player's actions consist of running and jumping augmented by moves such as flips wall climbs and glides and by environmental features such as bouncy objects wind or warp points so platform games usually use unrealistic physics in particular the avatar can usually change direction in mid-air or you can also perform double jumps without touching any physical objects so the vast majority of 2D side-scrolling games within Humanoid Avatar platform games. Okay, so a good example of that will be your Super Mario Brothers. So I assume most of you guys are familiar with this game. So this is what you call your Super Mario Brothers game. So this is a good example of your side-scrolling platform game. Next, 
The next genre that we have is your fighting games. So fighting games have little in common with other action games because they involve neither exploration nor puzzle solving. So they still qualify as action game because they place great demand on a player's physical skill. So that will be the uh, reaction time timing. So this game simulate hand-to-hand -hand combat, usually using highly exaggerated moves vaguely modeled on Asian martial arts techniques. So fighting games may be further subdivided into those which characters fight in one-on-one -on -one bouts, okay? And melee games in which one or two characters fight against large number of opponents. So this type of games are what we call beat-em-ups or brother games. Fighting games also use hand-to-hand -hand weapons such as swords and staffs and limited numbers of ranged weapons. So this is a good example of your action game. So this is a... Uh, JF image of Tekken. Okay. In fighting games, the player actions typically consist of hand-to-hand -hand attacking and defending moves of various sorts. So typically, certain defenses block some attacks but not others. And the players have to learn when and how to move, uh, how the moves are effective to basically trial and error. So you need to practice the moves that you'll be performing into the game to know whether they are effective or not. Okay, that is through trial and error or through experience of, play of playing the game. So each successful attack takes energy or HP away from the character's hit. And the game continues until one of the fighter's energy or HP drops to zero. So a common feature of fighting games is combo move. Often simply shortened to combo. So the effectiveness of the combo is often related to its difficulty of execution. More complex combos carry higher risk because the avatar is open to attack while the player carries out the sequence. So basically, again, a combo is a series of moves or actions um, uh, performed by the player in order for him in fighting games to disable and to defeat the enemy. So basically, a combo, it's a sequence. You need to perform all the moves in sequence in order for you to achieve that combo. So most of the time, these combos, when performed, Will, will give you advantage or will even kill your enemy instantly. Okay, so this could be an example of your combo for Tekken 7. So most of the time, if you'll be performing combos, your enemy will be uh, disabled or will not be able to do his moves while you're performing your combos. But again, there will be several instances wherein while performing the combo, the enemy can interrupt you, okay? and cancel your combo and maybe even to defeat you okay the next sub genre that we have is your fast puzzle games so fast puzzle games require the player to solve a problem as quickly as possible so these games are usually simple and visually attractive or abstract have a limited contro control set and are easy to design and build so tetris is a archetypal fast puzzle game so, other examples include Collapse, World Warp, and Bejeweled Blitz, the time-limited version of Bejeweled. So, casual gamers like fast puzzle games because they are easy to learn and don't take a long time to play. So, this subgenre is ideal for handheld devices and cell phones or smartphones. The advent of touchscreens has permitted natural direct control of puzzle elements. The joystick were weren't very good at. So, this is an example of your visual blitz. So, basically, this is like playing your casual games like Candy Crush, okay? But the main difference in here is you're limited with time, okay? So, you need to perform as many uh, uh, pairings, combos in this time. So, the higher your score, the better. Next genre that we have is your music dance and rhythm games. So they typically show an avatar on screen who dances in response to a player's input. In single player mode, the player's avatar must dance better than a computer controlled character. So in multiplayer mode, two avatars compete head to head against each other. So the screen shows which dance steps the player should perform next while the game awards points for pressing the correct button on the controller or, or performing the correct move with a motion sensitive device and for being on the beat. So the huge success of Guitar Hero and 
rock band demonstrates that a lot of players want to enjoy the fantasy of being a musician, even though they don't actually make music in this game. So, much of the fun in this game comes from using their specialized instruments, uh, instrument shape controllers. So, this is an example or a simple recording of the gameplay for your Guitar Hero Live. So, wherein you'll be needing um, an input device. So, usually a guitar like input device wherein you can hit uh, the corresponding buttons in order for you to hit this uh, notes. Okay. So, this is one example of your um, rhythm games. So, also, one good example of this type of uh, subgenre will be Dance Dance Revo if you're familiar with that game. Action games are... Now, let's proceed with the game features of your action games. So, for game features, action games provide a good field in which to study many features also found in other genres because the simplicity of action games means that the issues aren't obscured by other considerations. So, action games tend to be simple, obvious goals, and offer clear direct ways to reach them. Although goals may be difficult to achieve. So, why does action games tend to be simple in terms of game features? Because of its fast-paced real-time scenario or gameplay. Okay? Wherein, uh, the focus of the game will be more on the player's performance aside from the storyline itself. So, the first one is progression. So, the level progression in action games tend to be linear. Once the player completes all the level, then the player has won the whole game. So, completing some level unlocks others not previously available. So, within the level, progress may be linear. So, the player can go only forward or back or non-linear. The player has some freedom to choose her or ho her own path. So, let's say for example, if you'll be able to finish uh, a level or a mission, so you'll be propped up with this type of uh, messages. So, let's say for example, in here, in Metal Slug, once you finish a level or once you finish the game, uh, you'll be prompted with, with this. The next game feature for your action games will be the levels. All the levels in a team set have a similar appearance and a similar set of enemies or obstacles to overcome. So, a set of team levels usually end in an encounter with a boss who must be defeated. So, in some cases, the player must acquire power-ups or gain skills while completing tasks in the level to defeat the set's big boss and progress to the next set of level. So, in here, guys, um, we have a series of videos or GIFs for the game Metal Slug. So, as you can see, in your first screenshot, we have the uniformity of the enemies that you'll be encountering for your level. So, this is usually to set the team of the stage or of the level. So, in here, in the second image, so this is a image of the final boss that you'll be, uh, you'll be defeating in one of the levels for Metal Slug. So, most types of action games, uh, there will be bosses that you need to defeat in the last part of the levels in order for you to proceed to the next level or in order for you to finish the game. So each level presents the player with a variety of challenges and failure, failure to surmount them eventually cause the player to lose the level. So whether it's dancing poorly in the game or failing, falling off a clip of a platform game. So the next game feature is checkpoints. So some action games either automatically save the game or allow the player to do so at any time which allows him to recover from failure, uh, but not many do. So older games require the player to start again from the beginning of the current level or even the beginning of, or even in the beginning of the entire game. So as the player progresses through a level, he passes through one or more checkpoints along the way. So usually marked by some visual indicators that changes to inform the player that it has been passed or the game has been saved. So, when the avatar dies, it has to reappear somewhere. So, traditionally, it appears beside the last checkpoint that is that it passed. So, which requires it to start forward again from there. So, if the checkpoint was long way back, the player may have to replay a lot of the level to return to where he was. So, in modern games, the avatar's new incarnation appears in the same location at which it died. 
Or if that is impossible, then the new avatar appear, appears in the last saved location it occupied before it died. So the state of the level remains unchanged. The avatar just appears and click resumes. Apart from the loss of a life and perhaps the loss of the avatar's possession, the player is not punished by letting the avatar die. So let's say for example in here, um, in the game Sonic the Hedgehog, this piece in here, okay, or this structure in here represents the save point. So when Sonic pass on to this structure, then the progress of the game will be saved. So this is what we call your star post. So this is basically the save point in the game Sonic the Hedgehog. So aside from this type of structures, uh, different types of games implement different types of save points. So in here, in the game Metroid Z Zero Mission, the save point will be in a save room, wherein your player or your character must go in into a chamber in order for you to save the progress of the game. So let's say, for example, this avatar will go into the chamber, then you as the player will be asked if you want to save your progress or not. So if you click yes, then it will be performing an animation, okay, that will notify you that the game is already saved or you, you already saved the progress of your game. So just like this one, okay? So next, we also have your level exits, level warps, and teleporters. So many action games that require the player to explore the layout of each level designate a particular location as the normal transition point to the next level. So that will are the level exit or the exit dungeon. So a level exit may be guarded by enemies or is often well hidden. Uh, finding and passing through the level exit is usually determination of the condition of the level which moves the player to the next level. So most of the time uh, or different types of action games will implement different types of mechanics in order for you to unlock or to see the uh, level exit or the dungeon exit. So let's say for example in the game Bounce, uh, what you're going to do is you need to complete all the rings or you need to collect all the rings in order for you to visually see where the exit it and to go through with it. Okay, so again different types of games will implement different types of mechanics on how you're going to see or how you're going to use the level exit or the, the, the dungeon exit. So game designers often provide more than one exit from a level. So the standard exit which takes the player to the next level and one or more special ex exits that jump the player ahead several levels or take the player to an otherwise unaccessible level or it could be a hidden map. So these are known as level warps. Level warps are usually hidden or particularly difficult to reach, and the reward is proportional to the level of sacrifice required to get them. So most of the time, this could be a simple dungeon wherein when you find the level warp or where you find the entrance, you'll be given, let's say, several loots, okay? Or you could be given additional HP in finding that particular location within the map. So that per that location, uh, that particular location in the map could, could hold treasures or could hold something valuable to you as the player. So a teleporter is a transition point that causes the player's avatar to jump some place else within the same level. So teleporters often become available at the end of a long period of exploration. So the player can simply jump back to a previous location such as a home base or camp or it could be a safe location within the map without having to walk all the way back. Sometimes teleporters are implemented as a map uh, the player can bring up to allow quick movement to other locations. So in here guys we have a, a simple video or GIF of the Super Mario Brothers where it, it will be showing you different types of exits that you can use to navigate within through the game. So these tubes are also exits, okay? So let's say for example, uh, the player exits onto this tunnel, then uh, at the end of this stage, this will be your uh, level exit or your dungeon exit. So we're in after clearing the stage or after clearing the level, then you can exit this level and proceed to the next level, okay? Next, we have your challenges. So action games have more kinds of challenges than just about any other games. Although all most of these challenges test physical skills, speed and reaction time, steering and shooting, timing and rhythm, and the ability to execute combo moves in fighting games. So let's say in here we have a video 
or JF image of the Super Mario with a difficult level. So, we're in, you need to dodge all these obstacles or challenges within the game. So, this is not your usual Super Mario game, okay? So, basically, this is a more difficult level, level to begin with. So, other common types of challenges include pattern recognition or recogni recognizing the attack and patrol behaviors of the enemies and exploration, learning your way around the space. So, a few action games such as Tetris and Portal include puzzle-solving elements. The complexity of the puzzles should be inversely proportional to the amount of time pressure the player feels. Okay, so let's say for example in here. So, let's say you'll be performing this T-spin. So, this could be a challenge uh, that you can face while playing the Tetris game. So, we're in, you need this T brick in here to be placed somewhere in here or in there. So, in order for you to place the par this particular uh, brick into this location, you need to perform this T spin. Okay, so that could be an example of your challenges. Then, we also have your obstacles, hazards, and dangers. In a game that requires navigation through a space, the player's avatar is typically faced with three types of problems. So a passive obstacle, stationary hazards, and active dangers or enemies. A passive uh, obstacle impedes movement without the actually threatening the avatar. So to get past a wall or a, sh a chasm, the player climbs over or jumps across. Okay? So this could be an example of your obstacle. So obstacles can... Also trap the avatar in a region with other dangers. Obstacles are usually, but are not always, indestructible. So basically, this part of the wall is what we call your passive, um, passive obstacle. So wherein a, this obstacle uh, will not be able to kill you, but will impede you or stop you from moving around the map. Next, a stationary hazard attack. The avatar, when she gets close it, but it does not move around the landscape. So, example of stationary hazards include electric fences, swinging blades, or a pendulum, or plants that bite. So, some stationary hazards must be attacked or destroyed to allow the avatar to pass. To pass by others are indestructible and must be treated like obstacles. So, the avatar has to avoid or surmount them. So, basically, the main difference between your uh, passive obstacle and your stationary hazards are, both of them are stationary, but your stationary hazards will have the ability to kill your avatar. So, this is an example of your um, stationary hazard. So, this is from the game Metal Slug. So, this is what you call your huge IV. So, basically, this is a carnivorous plant, wherein your character comes close into this, will be eating your avatar. So, basically, what you're going to do here is you either destroy it, or uh, you dodge it. Next, we have active dangers or enemies. So, active dangers or enemies attack the avatar moving around in the landscape. So, in old games, they often move in a fixed patrol pattern that the player could learn to avoid. But in modern games, artificial intelligent enemies can locate and pursue the avatar from uh, for a bigger challenge. So, let's say, for example, we have your huge hermit in he, in Metal Slug, okay? So, basically, this is a an enemy or an active monster that will be able to chase your avatar or your main character. So, basically, this type, this type of enemies are aggro. So, meaning they're aggressive towards uh, the players or the player within the game. Next, we also have waves. So, when we say waves, we, are, we don't refer to the waves that you'll be able to see on the sea, but basically, waves of monsters, okay? Group of monsters. So, when enemies appear or attack in groups, usually groups of the same type or similar types of enemies, they are said to come in waves. As the game progresses, the waves include stronger enemies. At latter stage of the game, you may want to face out the earlier weaker enemies because they will no longer provide an effective challenge. So, Enemies increase in strength and number, reaching a peak at the end of the level. So, let's say for example in here, you have a swarm or wave of enemies. So, basically, tanks are coming, troops are coming, and helicopters are coming. Okay, so basically, uh, when we say waves, this will be enemies that come in large number. Okay? Then you have the boss. 
So in many games, a large enemy or boss significantly harder to fight than any of the previously encountered enemies guards the end of the group of level teams. Defeating the boss often marks the end of the chapter and may take the player to a new set of team levels or new major goals. Boss characters often can't be hurt by normal methods. Damaging them may require special weapons, uh, a special attack method, or special timing. Okay? So, basically, uh, bosses are enemies with higher HPs and uh, larger attack powers. So the boss appearance, so the boss character appearance and actions complement uh, the theme of the set of levels it guards. So sometimes the boss character is simply a much larger of another character that the player already defeated. Uh, the boss also enhances the gameplay by allowing the player to predict some of the boss's behavior and give him a small advantage in knowing what to expect. So basically, when we refer to boss, we usually refer to the final monster that you'll, you'll need to defeat within the game, and usually a larger or a big monster that you need to defeat within the game. So uh, this could be a great representation of how boss fights happen in all types of games, not just in action games. Next, we have monster generators and spawn points. If the enemies appear from a visible object that the player can destroy, that object is a monster generator. If the enemies appear seemingly out of thin air at a particular location, that is called a spawn point. Okay? So basically, a spawn point is a location within the map wherein um, monsters appear out of thin air or they just spawn in that particular location. If the player destroys a monster generator, no more monsters come out of it. As a result, the player has a choice of the strategy. It's either to fight the monster or destroy the generator. The strategy with the lowest risk, risk involves destroying the monster generator before they can spawn too many monsters. But players aiming for highest score may delay destroying the monster generator until they boost their score sufficiently by killing enough monsters. So this choice makes the game more interesting. So a monster generator or spawn point might produce only one type of enemy or might offer a range of different foes. So, they could also spawn boss monsters. Next, we have player actions. So, action games routinely allow moving or maneuvering an avatar, aiming and shooting, selecting, collecting, manipulating, or modifying objects and various kinds of fighting moves like punching, kicking, defending, and so on. Platformers naturally include a number of moves for traversing the environment, such as climbing and jumping. Dance games require the player to move in time with the music. So, let's say for example in here. So, in uh, fighting games like Tekken, so you can perform different types of moves. You can punch, you can kick, you can jump, you can dodge, etc. etc. Action games or... Uh, the next part of our discussion will be regarding your uh, core mechanic features of action game genre. So action games have a small number of resources and the relationship among these resources are straightforward. Being hit by an enemy costs energy points or could cost you HP or hit points. Collecting gold stars increases the final score and so on. So the player in an action game is too busy to study a complex internal e economy. Okay, so what usually happens is if you uh, kill the monster, you'll be able to get score or, or you'll be able to get gold stars or objects uh, that could provide you score within the game. Next, we have lives. So the number of lives provides usually ranges between 3 to 5. So colliding with an enemy or some other dangerous objects or losing all of your resources such as health or energy cause the player a life. So to balance this mechanic, players may earn extra lives by picking up a power-up or reaching a certain score or they may be able to pick up health to avoid losing a life. So the player's avatar is usually invulnerable for a few seconds when he reappears after losing a life so he can regain his bearings. So let's say, for example, um, your avatar died within a uh, few inches with the monsters uh, most of the game implements invulnerability for a few seconds, okay? In order for you to, let's say, cast buffs or basically to dodge some of the attacks that the monsters are going to hit you with. 
So this is especially important if he reappears in a dangerous area rather than a safe checkpoint. When the player loses all his lives, he must either start over or return to the most recent checkpoints or save game. So let's say for example, in here you have your Sonic the Hedgehog. So your lives will be placed in here. So you, as you can see, Sonic times 3. So as of the moment in this screenshot, your, your avatar will have 3 lives. So in Pac-Man, your lives will be uh, located in here. So usually, at the start of the game, you'll be seeing three um, Pac-Man shapes in here. So representing the lives of your character or your avatar. Next, energy. The player's avatar begin the game with a limited amount of energy often characterized as hit points or health or some call them HP or hit points or abbreviation for Hit points. Dangerous encounters with enemies or other hazardous features of the game would deplete the energy. In some games, time itself, just living in the game world, consumes energy. So this energy can often be partially or even fully replenished by using a collectible or a power-up, but when the avatar's energy is fully depleted, then it dies. Okay, so there's, there are certain games wherein you can pick up uh, HPs or you can pick up extra lives. Okay, in order for you to avoid dying. So in a game in which avatars have multiple lives, when the avatar's energy is completely depleted, one of its lives will be lost. So let's say for example, we have your Metal Slug Advance. So in this screenshot, your life is represented using a bar like this. Okay, it's like a progress bar. Okay, that represents your HP. So if it's full, then you have 100% of your HP. Unlike on the previous screenshots that we have, they'll be represented with number of objects. Okay. Next, we have your power-ups. As a reward for progress, the player may be given a power-up. That is, the opportunity to increase her avatar strength or some other attributes temporarily or even permanent. So this could come uh, like... Um, uh, additional art, uh, additional artillery for shooter type games, okay? This could be ammo, okay? This could be additional life or could be additional HPs. Power-ups could come in different types. So a permanent power-up is one of the remains that... So a permanent power-up is one that remains with the avatar for an extended period. Possibly the remainder of the game, but at least the current life or the level, Okay? So temporary power-ups provide a powerful but short-lived advantage. This may be limited by time. For example, the avatar may move faster but only for a short period from a few seconds to a few minutes or by the number of times they can be used. Okay, uh, Like I've said, let's say for example in Metal Slug, you can pick up uh, power-ups that will be able you will be, will able you to use um, machine guns, shotguns, or RPGs. But all of them will have limited number of times you can use it. So for example, a shield may be used up to after it has absorbed a certain amount of hits. Okay, so one good example of uh, power-up is the Big Mushroom from Super Mario. So it allows the avatar to grow. Okay. Next, collectibles and breadcrumbs. Collectibles are bonus objects that the player can pick up that are not necessarily essential to the game and are often used only to augment the player's score. So the player is not penalized for failing to collect them, but if he can justify the race, then the rewards are high. It is usually impossible to get all the to get the highest score without collecting them all. Okay, so let's say for example in here, I have a JF, JF or a video in here wherein the player will be able to pick up an item. So I believe this is a snake. Okay. So once the avatar pick up this snake, then it will be adding 500 points to its score. Okay. So let's wait for it. Okay. So as you can see, it will be adding 500 to the score. Next, we have breadcrumbs. So breadcrumbs are collectibles that, that reward a player for following a particular path. So Mario stars and Sonic rings are examples of this breadcrumbs. So basically, when you collect these breadcrumbs, it will be adding to your score. So the higher or the more breadcrumbs you collect, the higher the score you'll have. Next, we have score. For many action game players, earning a high score is more important than the story. So keep track of the player's accomplishment, completing tasks, defeating enemies, collecting items, 
length of time through each level, and so on. So one of these numbers is normally more important than the other, especially if it is the one that determines victory over the other players in a multiplayer game. So many games reward skillful play with bonus scores and multipliers. So the classic example of this score multiplier can be found in Pac-Man. After getting the power up power pill, the first ghost that the player eats earns 200 points. The next earns 400 points, then 800, then 1,600. So let's say in here, so in Metal Slug score, uh, Metal Slug score through item loops, item loots. So as you can see, as the player uh, or as your avatar collects all these gold coins, it corresponds to additional scores. Next, you have your character and object. In action games, the player avatar must be extremely easy to pick out. So first person shooter or FPS games in which the avatar is not displayed on screen. Don't represent this problem, but in other action games, the avatar may be show up in a clutter of other graphics. So the avatar must be distinctive with a unique shape, color, or position on screen. So Lara Croft, for example, wears a distinctive shirt in a teal blue used nowhere else in the, tomb, in the game Tomb Raider. So majority of the action games use color schemes that indicate enemies, extending the idea of the avatar's unique color so that the enemies too follow a common scheme of color or appearance. So some games also use a circle on the ground under the character's feet or health bar over its head. So uh, some type of games outside or aside from uh, action game genre provides health bar over the uh, head of the character in order for you to determine uh, where are the characters or the avatars that available for you to move. So this helps the player to identify her or her own character when there are several of them visible in the crowd. So two-dimensional scrolling games frequently use the position to distinguish the avatar. So in these games, the world moves around the avatar, which remains in the same absolute position. So usually at the center of the game. So at least on the same horizontal or vertical line on screen, giving players a fixed point of reference by which they can orient themselves. Next, you have controls. Action games with the exemptions of fighting games, require simple controls. Because of the fast phase of these action games, the physical act of using the controls should, whenever possible, directly translate to avatar's action. Pushing left on the controls make the avatar go to left. Pushing the right makes the avatar go to right, go to the right of the screen, and so on. So for 2D games, this is simple to design. But first, uh, but for, for first or third person 3D games, the third dimension complicates the matter. So until recently, all input devices like joysticks, mice, d-pads, and so on have allowed inputs in only two-dimensional. So movement in third dimension had to be controlled by separate, so usually binary buttons, which is less convenient. So Nintendo's Wii, Nintendo's Wii controller can input control data in three dimension. Uh, Nintendo Wii use a different controller as compared to other game consoles, okay? So that's why you can control the game's input via three dimension. So this is usually the type of um, console uh, consoles that you can use in order for you to play um, AR games, uh, virtual games, or 3D games, etc., etc. Okay, so that will be the end of our discussion for our... Um, action game genre. So the next part of our discussion is I'll be showing you a game or I'll be showing you the game Metal Slug 3 on your on how you're going to install it using your mobile phone and your personal computer using an emulator. Okay? So let's proceed with the demonstration. Okay guys, so the next part of your module is now you need to play a game under action game genre. So the game that I have selected for you to play is the Metal Slug 3. So uh, the data that I've gathered from the survey that we I did on your class for the devices availability for students under iGamesy, the survey produced this, that most of the students will have Android phones. So the game that we'll be playing or the, the platform that we'll be using is, of course, the Android platform. So I'll be providing you the installer for the Metal Slug 3 Android game. 
Okay? So I'll be providing you with the link on where to download this game in the description of this video below and on the Edmodo post. Okay? Just click on that link then uh, you'll be prompted with the installer. So make sure that you'll be downloading all these files. So upon opening the folder, you'll be seeing two files and another folder. So first, we have a text file in here. So basically, this is the instruction on how to install the game on your Android phone. Then you have the APK file or your installer. Then you have a separate folder. So this separate fo folder will have your OBB files. Okay, so the OBB files will be the additional files that you need to download in order for you to play the game. So now let's proceed. So the first thing that I'll be demonstrating to you guys is how to install the game directly on your mobile phone. Okay, so in here, I have my mobile phone. So for you to install the game, first thing that you'll be needing is, of course, you need internet connectivity to download the, bra to download the game and a web browser. So in here, I have my web browser. So after clicking the link, okay, so you will be prompted with this. So this is the folder where you can download the installer for Metal Slug 3. All you need to do now is to click the download button in here in order for you to download the installer. Now, uh, before starting this uh, demonstration, I, ho I have already downloaded the files uh, needed for the installation. So I'll be showing you where, uh, where are my files. So I have placed them in my memory card, then under downloads folder. Okay, so as you can see in here, guys, I already have downloaded the files. So you have your text file, you have your APK, and you have your OBB folder. So what you're going to do now. So before installing the game, the first thing that you'll be needing is you need to move this folder. Okay, so we'll be moving this folder onto your phone storage inside the android folder then you need to find your obb folder or if you don't have the obb folder first create your obb folder so select the obb folder then move it there okay so the folder uh should be placed under android slash obb folder so once you have moved that folder the next thing that you're going to do is you need to install now the game. So just click the APK, then install your game. Okay? So let's just wait for the installation. Install's done. I'll click open. Allow the privilege access. So it will unpack the files that you've added on your OBB. Then now you have your game. Okay? So what you're going to do now is just to play this game. So, tap to start, main mission, okay, arcade mode. Now, you can play the game, okay? So, the installation on your mobile phone is as easy as that, okay? So, let me repeat. First, the OBB files should be located or should be moved to the android slash obb folder install the apk then play the game that's it okay so let's continue so after demonstrating the installation using a mobile phone so let's proceed to the next part so the next part is i'll be showing you how to play the android game using your laptops or your personal computers so in order for you to do that you need to download an emulator so i can recommend you two emulators that you can use so uh just choose one of them where is best suited for your device so you can install the nox player or the blue stacks i assume you're familiar with these guys so if you're selecting nox all you need to do is go down to bignox.com Okay, then you'll be prompted with this website. Then just click this download button. Okay, to download the installer. So then install the Nox player. Or if you'll be using your BlueStacks, uh, go proceed to BlueStacks.com. Then click the download button for BlueStacks 4. Then install your emulator. Now, either way, uh, both works. Okay, but 
for this scenario, I will be using the Nox player to demonstrate how to install the game using your uh, emulator. Okay? So, first thing that you're going to do now is you need to have access to the installers. Okay? So, these are the files that you'll be needing in order for you to install the game. So, I have placed the installer on my desktop folder. So, remember where you have put the installers. Okay, so after installing the game, downloading the installers, or uh, after installing the emulator and downloading the game, now let's proceed. So using Nox, okay, uh, I'll be showing you how to install the game using this emulator. So in order to do that, you need to click this button. So this button will prompt you, or the file assistant button will prompt you with options to open the PC folder or to open the Android folder. So the first thing that you need to do now is first, you need to click the open PC folder. So what you're uh, going to see in here is you'll be prompted with several folders in here. So these are the uh, folders that you can access within the Android environment. So what I'm going to do now is I'll be copying all of the files for the Metal Slug 3. So I'll copy this. Okay, then I'll be pasting it under the Android folder. So I'll copy it in here. Okay, so that, now, so I have my installers in here. So you can close this one. So after copying the installers, okay, let's close this one. Then what you're going to do is you need to select this button, open Android folder. Now, so it will be opening you the file manager for your Android system. So what you're going to do now is first, you need to locate where are your installer or, or where is the installer so again as i've told you earlier i've placed the installers within the download folder so select the download folder then you can see the files in here so uh we basically share the files from your android file explorer to your Andro uh windows file explorer to your android file manager so the first thing that you'll, you need to do is you need to move this one this folder this com that uh, dotemu that neo geo that ms or m slug three. So what you're going to do now is you need to move this one. So uh, let's copy this. Okay, then navigate through your um uh, file manager. Click on Android. Select OBB. If you don't have the OBB folder, you can create the, your OBB folder in here. So just click this button to create a new folder. So select your OBB folder. Then will be pasting it here. Okay, now, so you have your OBB folder for your Metal Slug 3. So, as you can see, you'll be needing two files in here, two .obb files. Okay, so once that's existing, then you're good to go. So, what we're going to do now is we'll go back to the download folder to navigate through the APK or the installer. So, select the APK, then install. Okay. Then, we'll open the game. So, it will be unpacking the files. Then, now, you can play the game using your personal computer or your laptop using an emulator. Okay? It will have the same procedure whether you're using your Nox player or your Bluestacks. But, for my use case, uh, I would recommend Nox player. Okay? So, just click start. Okay. Then, you can already play your game. Okay? So, let's try to play your game using this emulator. So, main mission, okay. arcade mode. Okay. okay. So, now, how to play. So, basically, guys, I'll be showing you how to add your controllers. So, for now, I'll be Marco. selecting player 1, or Marco as the player 1. So, click start. Mission. Okay, so, these are the buttons that you can use. So, this is the button that you can use to navigate through the environment. Okay? So, the A button is to basically shoot. C is to throw the uh, bombs. B is to jump. Okay. Now, what we're going to... Uh, we also have your pause button in here. Okay. And you'll be prompted with the menu. So, I'll just resume. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we need to map the controllers that you'll be using for this game. So, as you can see, we're using a laptop. You're using a computer. Okay. The input that the input device that we'll be using will be the keyboard. So, on your Nox, click this button. Okay. So, this button is keyboard mapping. 
So you need to select what type of controllers are you going to shoot, uh, use for the game. So for the controller in here, you'll be using a D-pad. So for the D-pad, uh, in order for your character to be moving, so you'll be using the AWSD to move your character. Okay? Then for these buttons, you can basically cl click at them. Okay? So then you can assign a letter. So let's say for example, we'll be, we'll be following the letters that are labeled in here. So I'll be using C. Uh, well, oh, no, no, no. Let's change this one. So we can't use A because uh, your D-pad already has the uh, one map out. Okay? So for the attack, I'll be using spacebar. Or no. For this one, I'll be using spacebar. So for the uh, bombs, uh, let's say I'll be using E. And for the jump, I'll be using R. So basically, guys, uh, just map the control or the keyboard keys that you want to use. Okay, it's up to you. Then after mapping your controllers, then just click save. So as you can see, I won't be clicking using my mouse. Okay, I'll be using my keyboard. So as you can see, my character now can move. I'll be pressing E. Then my avatar will be throwing those bombs. And I'll be spacing or clicking the space bar. Then my avatar can fire its weapon. Okay. Then letter R to jump. So basically that's it. So uh, that's all the things that you'll be needing in order for you to play the Metal Slug 3 Android game using an emulator on your personal computer or your laptop. If you have additional questions on how to install or having difficulty in the installation on your mobile phones or your personal computers, hit me a private message on my Facebook account. I'll be providing you a link with my profile on my Facebook account in our Edmodo class. Okay? If you have additional questions, you can send me a private message in there or you can comment them on my Edmodo post. Okay? So, good luck playing this game. Again, uh, after playing this game, you can take the assessment. The assessment will be available after posting week 5 because for week 4, uh, I believe there will be no assigned uh, assessment because uh, I believe it's shortened week something or etc etc. But again, um, assessment will be posted for week 5. It will be a combination of an assessment for week 4 and week number 5. Good luck guys.